were real. I mean, they existed. They they were so they felt so real at that time. I mean, sometimes I would I needed to literally, you know, like tell them to back off, <laughs> so that I could go back to my life in in those few hours and all that I would be writing. But that stage felt like a mo at a, a time where, like you said, uh, lives could go in any direction. The the characters were evolving a little bit. Uh, they had experienced so much and they were changing a little bit so it was it's a bit like you know molding uh, when you if you keep watching uh, the the pupa break up and all of course the butterfly comes out but in a way uh, that takes away the wonder uh, you know you, you, if you walk away then and then later on you don't know what's going to come out of the pupa so it felt like that moment um, you know some sort of a pivot maybe where i just wanted to walk away and after that anything could happen and in a way their lives would be more ordinary after that like they would blend in with the you know kind of life stories that happened but till then it was special that that period was special so it just felt enough so i actually wrote the ending quite early okay. end point a bit early and then i had the beginning and some parts of that then uh, my editor also made me add more to the in between part of the story so you mentioned that uh, like you 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 uh, the editor was asking you to give a little bit more to the readers don't keep everything to yourself so yeah that brings me to my next question actually so you are a poet and a prose writer so you have written novel uh, poetry collection and now a novel so uh, i'm so i have tried to write poems and miserably failed uh, i can only write prose so i'm very curious to know how how the process is different when you write poems and prose or or is there any difference how do you approach both of the forms can i say i don't know <laughs> uh, like i said i so first of all I, i i very rarely call myself a writer that just feels like you know i have assumed that sort of personality which i don't think i have but uh, for me instinct or the the desire to express something uh, or, or to kind of manifest poetry is the strongest so when something is bubbling inside and it has to come out it is it takes the form of poetry uh, i would prefer not to you know say a lot usually so so that suits poetry uh, poetry for me is magical it's more sensual um, it's also you know a lot more like it's very poignant and it's uh, it's everything i mean even if i'm reading i prefer poetry followed by short stories and all so that's there prose is more of an effort i mean this didn't feel like uh, it didn't feel as much as like as much of an effort I, because of the way organically it came but um, it is ultimately for me everything is an is an extension of poetry and um, in a way myth making you know making up something out of nothing uh ascribing assuming uh, personas and speaking in that voice and also for me it's it's not very different but that's the kind of prose i write so i'm probably not the best person to <laughs> you know answer the question but it's not very distant for me yeah so when i was when i read the so even though i don't write poetry i can't write poetry i read a little bit of poetry and when i read the prose that you have written um i felt that yeah this is some this is a work of maybe a poet because uh, prose writers often follow a lot of you know rules and regulations and you know how uh, how you should write and how you should not write but your prose was like very it's flowing it's it's uh, like you know it, it doesn't worry about whether you whether the reader gets it or whether because when i write i i worry a lot whether or oh, whether the reader gets it but you have given a lot of credit to the reader assume that reader is very intelligent so i even if even if i say this much the reader will understand so that kind of uh, you know you have written very concisely and i was i was actually delighted at some points that you have stopped there didn't say much because it gave me the freedom to imagine or you know yeah. be a part of the book so i think that's how the reader becomes a part of the book when you give the space oh, absolutely <laughs> i mean it, it's like um, it's not the best to give an example but hopper's you know there are paintings there's this art which is like that right i mean you 
you see uh, a painting where there's just let's say an empty room with a window and uh, the rest of the art is actually uh, in your head that that painting uh, starts where that visual frame ends so i personally like and resonate with those sort of uh, expressions um, I don't want to be told everything when I'm reading. Uh, I, I don't want a lot of detail. I want to fill in the uh, the gaps and I want to be allowed to imagine and kind of co-create in a way uh, what happens. And I feel that's how we all sort of relate to each other as people also, you know. I mean, we have um, notions about others which may have nothing to do with what they are or what they think they are. We, we do that all the time with each other. So that's the way it goes for me. Um, yeah, the language is, <laughs> like you're describing, it's probably a little unorthodox sometimes, and um, I, I, don't, I don't know the rules too much. Uh, so thankfully, that doesn't stop me, uh, whether it's in writing or in many other things I do too. Uh, I kind of go with my instinct and what feels right. So I go like that, but I must give credit in the case of this book to my editor, uh, Sucharita, who is amazing. So she sort of, I think, acted like a, you know, a, um, not a sculptor, like she actually went through the manuscript and she pointed out at places that you have to give out more. Uh, you know, everything cannot be uh, so totally uh, kept in your head at certain points um, because like she was saying there is something there but you have to you know hook them in you so some of those little um, techniques maybe uh, which I didn't know or I didn't care much about uh, were all sort of uh, put into play thanks to her and she uh, and she did that with and I pointed that out in my note she did that with a wonderful kind of empathy uh, without which I wouldn't have responded you know willingly to her so she she walked with me this manuscript and she I could see that she saw the the characters and she cared for them like I wanted somebody who cared for these uh, people not feel sad for them but to actually care for them and she seemed to do that and then when she made suggestions and she kind of guided me uh, at different places and we took some time over this uh, partly because I was doing it slowly and all uh, but that really helped, I think. Uh, so I must give her that um, absolute credit. But basically for me, this was, uh, I, I was seeing these things happen um, uh, in front of me and it was a matter of how much would I, uh, you know, scoop out of that and put onto the paper. But, uh, but I knew, like I, I had the benefit of first sight <laughs> and the second sight that is coming into the pages. So, yeah, I think um, as like, you know, from Kerala, like when I, I grew up reading a lot of Malayalam literature and especially short stories. I think there is there was a notion at least in Malayalam literature that you have to be very concise when you write short stories. You can't just say everything. So I think every writer uh, from Kerala who has grown up reading Malayalam literature has been uh, influenced by this, I guess, because uh, my literature teachers, when I read things I wrote, they were saying like, no, 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 you can't give away everything. You have to be, you have to measure your words like it's gold, <laughs> you know. You can't say things which is not required. So I think that kind of a background of Malayalam literature, uh, yeah, I think it it must, might have uh, influenced you as well, right? Uh, might have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I cause grew up reading a lot, but not just Malayalam. I Actually, I've read at that point, I think more of, more of my reading was in English than in Malayalam, though I, I used to read Malayalam too. But English, not just English literature, but translations from other lang uh, you know, Indian languages, other languages into um, English. But yes, I think ultimately everything uh, that one has read uh, may influence you. But, but I like to think that for me, my writing isn't necessarily linked to my reading. Um, they're completely, of course, I, there, there are there are similarities in the sense there are certain kinds of writing that I, I also like to read but the writing is more organic and it's more sort of yeah, yeah, that, uh, I mean, yeah uh, it's when, just the way I am when I when so, I read the novella I felt like you're so you're going moving from present to past and past to present like it's I felt it's kind of uh, moving uh, like uh, very very easily from past to present present to past you're jumping here there and but it's not when you read it's, it, it it flows very smoothly but as a writer it's not an easy thing i know that mm -hmm. because um, 
most of the time when you have flashbacks so most of the writers be on the safe side they'll add like one para one chapter for present and one chapter for past so they try to delineate the past and present uh, because it's easier but in your prose it's like the past present are two interwoven so one one paragraph for, will be the past the present and the next you will jump back to the flashback so did you do any kind of chronological ordering of events or something no. <laughs> I, i never did but uh, alt you know finally when we were doing the last reading and all i did go and cross check a few things just to make sure that uh, i think in films they call it continuity yeah. but basically small little things were um, consistent like the color of a wall or you know some some small physical descriptions because even i was forgetting yeah. what i had written in because of this kind of um, zigzag yeah. maybe but but that's that way of telling the story came about again organically so that's the way the uh the story evolved for me i mean not the story the uh, events and for me that was the that was also the fun in writing this because as with time you know your memory of events will change how you choose to tell the story of something that happened to you will change as you change so this was not just about going backward and forward but it was about exploring what happens around that narrative you know what can you do with a narrative which is incident you know incidents the physical incidents don't change you know it's like it's, it's it's physics right ultimately if a stone drops from the top of a hill the stone is fallen i mean it's not nothing is changing but the ripples caused by that stone or you know somebody gets hit by the shrapnel whatever it is so those things can evolve based on the telling based on the timing based on the person based on so many things so memory is also a huge kind of memory is a character for me like memory itself is a, has has personality memory is a person memory meddles with you you know i always feel that um, in i mean if 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 i were to write a play ever i would actually cast memory as a character who meddles with stories and who plays with you you know plays with the whole narrative so that's the reason for going in this kind of zigzag fashion because i think we all recall and recount so many things and then the past becomes the present and sometimes the future becomes you know the the future is already so there is no future right the future is now uh, so it's a continuum so all of those ideas per se are fascinating for me i think they just came, kind of came alive in the story <laughs> yeah i think it's also like credit to sucharita like because most most of the editors uh, they don't um, prefer this uh, kind of you know complex way of still telling a story because it's easier for them to if you have need, if you follow a neat structure it is easier much easier for them to you know uh, figure out whether everything is done correctly so i think it's a big <laughs> a yeah. credit to her also to yeah, allow yeah, you and, to and and red river because they picked this up and i'm grateful because i i i never thought this would you know resonate with the with any kind of publishing house uh, so yeah uh they, they she saw something in it and you know others who sort of uh, read it also connected with it um even when the manuscript went out for blurbs and all i was actually nervous as to what people would <laughs> you know say initially and was just relieved to see that somehow it it was connecting and i didn't have that confidence i still don't have it but yeah thanks to those uh, you know those wonderful girls <laughs> ultimately <laughs> so yeah i think that comes around to my last question for the evening so you when we talked last time so you mentioned that the ending so we were talking about the ending of the like so you were saying the uh, girls adapt so please read the story so if you read the story you may get it so uh, without any spoilers so the girls finally try to adapt uh, to their new situation and they are trying to take control of their situation but I just wanted to know that in Indian context, when they say women adapt, and women adapt means women make uh, uh, sacrifices, women adjust, not adapt actually. So, did were you uh, like um, were you consciously thinking about all these ideas when you were uh, making up that uh, ending? So, were you were you mm, thinking about all yeah, of that? No, I I was actually thinking more of a slight shift in power. You know, when when terrible. things happen to you uh terrible by normal standards right so exceptional exceptional things happen to you exceptional events take control of your life and you are thrown around and you are you 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 are seen as a victim you are helpless and all 
uh, those events actually in a way build your strength and and there is a sort of evolution that happens uh, it is not the it is not escape but it's a way of shifting the narrative a little bit at some point i always i feel that um, there are points where such so called victims step out of that little shell or, or just put you know sort of one foot out and that's a very tentative uh, way of taking over control in in a very um subtle way not by trying to escape or or changing uh, the box they put into but kind of taking over the power uh, I, i don't know if um, you watched this movie umrao jam rekha's movie and uh, you have yeah so and i i i, I think i'm I hope I'm not making this up. <laughs> But at the end of the movie, that character, uh, she steps into this old. I mean, thing events have happened to her, right? So many things have happened to her, and uh, it's a very tragic sort of a life ultimately. But at the end of the movie, she steps into this uh, haveli, and she stands in front of a mirror, and she wipes off the yeah. dust, yeah. and she looks into the mirror. I was fast. I mean, I'm, I still go and watch that movie just to watch that little bit. But for me, that's a very pivotal moment. Like somewhere. I am actually interested in what happened to that woman after that. It feels like you know she's shifting the terms of that story in a very subtle way. So that's there, and and for me the end of this is nowhere like nowhere that that powerful perhaps, but uh, somewhere these girls are sort of growing up um, and and contemplating what could happen, and maybe they start to. take you know like take control of those threads a little bit like become more of the puppet master than the puppets mm-hmm. so that possibility may or may not happen so i was really thinking more of that yeah yeah so it's kind of uh, taking control in the situation they yeah. are put in yeah. trying to some shift of yeah. power between yeah. uh, you know shift of power from the, the ones who were controlling their mm-hmm. lives mm-hmm. till then in a very subtle way without kind of upsetting the equilibrium because they can't i mean they can't afford to be uh, even contemplating some form of escape but within that how can you just change it a little bit so it's so adapting is not a bad thing you know adapting to a situation is actually how life is survived and life becomes more powerful successful when you adapt in the right way i mean adapting could mean that you grow the right kind of you know horns on your head so um uh adapting surviving etc are all good things but when you do it with a slight shift of power to yourself you take charge of uh, the, of of your life a little bit so it's just there they're still quite young and also nothing yeah. much has happened but that's the point where i wanted to actually walk away yeah so i think uh, like because it's an open ending and i guess the last few lines of your uh, you know so today i read it again so i think the last few lines really conveys it like you know whatever you want to say you are so i can't say like it's completely open ended if you are you are trying to say that this is uh, this is what they are planning to do so i think yeah yeah <laughs> i mean earlier it was <laughs> more open ended then i was uh, sort of coaxed i think into <laughs> opening up a little bit more but yeah i think um, you know um, uh, one of the uh, one of the things that always works in my head is when you are traveling by train especially in india i think you pass through sceneries right and you see houses and windows and and everything and and you're seeing vignettes of life and then you walk away and i've always been fascinated by that you know what happens after that you sometimes see somebody just looking out of a window and your eyes meet and i know movies have been made uh, with a with a lot of <laughs> sensational plotting and all but that that phenomenon actually fascinates me that you just um, see that and you you walk away they walk away but life continues so yeah so i i'm i'm glad that we we went through all the questions without spoiling the <laughs> story because it's a very short and uh, you know very short story and so it's very easy to spoil you one needs to be very careful not to spoil anything so I'm, so i'm really glad and i think then we'll move on to the next uh, like segment and uh, i would request anuradha to read a little bit for us whichever i don't know whether you have picked your favorite or not but we would really love to hear from you 